Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming to the Abstract Amusement Park. I'm glad you're here today. Thanks for turning in your tickets. Nobody will win anything because you brought those, just so you know, <laughs> OK? Um, everybody passed the height test, so you're all tall enough to ride. Awesome, right? Hey, so <clears throat> that's me. Today, today, we're gonna talk about selling, and that's the emotional roller coaster. Okay? So who likes roller coasters? Okay, somebody tell me what you like about them. They're exciting. They're scary. Adrenaline. What don't you like about them? Huh? Waiting in line, right? Somebody said they're scary, right? They're constricting. Okay, so so we're gonna hop on a roller coaster right now. Okay, so everybody stand up. I know you got food. Shove it on your chair. Stand up for me, please. <coughs> okay, I actually had these grand illusions of getting two tour buses, having us all load up, go out to Six Flags, ride the coaster, come back and do the rest of Sales Academy, okay? But it didn't work, it didn't work. So we're gonna pretend like we're on a roller coaster, you with me, okay? So before that, as we're boarding the roller coaster, I want you to keep all your arms and legs and small co-workers inside the car at all times, okay? All right, so you're gonna mimic what I'm doing, okay? Sure. Okay, so arms up. Because we're going up the hill, right? So everybody lean back, lean back. Okay, so you're going to remember, can you feel it? Everybody's shaking, right? Going up. So what's that feel like? That's scary, right? Right? Really scary. And you're getting close to the top and it's like, right? And you're going around the top corner and all of a sudden you go down, right? Okay, so mimic me. Whoa! 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 Ride's done, sit down. Okay. Ride used to be longer, but electricity is really expensive out here at the park, and so we shortened them just a tad. Okay? So, sales is like a roller coaster, that's my point. Okay? It is. <clears throat> so, today we're going to talk about that. So, how we're, we're going to talk about how we ride the emotional roller coaster and actually how we live to talk about it. So, so let's move on. So here's some examples of emotional roller coasters when things were going so well, and then <laughs> things were going so well, and then <laughs> <laughs> things were going so well, and then <laughs> I don't want to see the next picture, right? <laughs> Things are going so well. The good day. I'm going to try this. That didn't end well. Things are going so well, smiling for the picture until my hair caught on fire. Okay? That made the day bad. Things were great. So, that's examples of when things were going well, and then all of a sudden, things turned south. Well, here's a couple of examples of things that weren't going well and turned out to be awesome, okay? So failure occurred in the design of a meter to study and control the heat on a battleship. But it didn't work. So that's what's created, the slinky. Made a few bucks off of that. The next thing was that failure occurred in a laboratory when a petri dish experiment didn't work out well. Petri dish went in the trash and a couple days later they pulled it out and they found penicillin. <laughs> Oops, sorry, that's, that's penicillin. Doesn't he look scary? Okay. He, it, it, it should have been a happy day, but he doesn't look like it. Okay. Another example. So a failure occurred when in the design of radio frequency equipment in order to control and restore body temperature, right? As a result of that, the pacemaker was created. Cool? Okay, Albert Hoffman, this is probably my favorite one and some of you in the crowd will think this is pretty awesome. 
maybe be able to relate to it. What happened was he was working on researching lysergic acid, some of the applications of it, and he accidentally created LSD. <laughs> Maybe close to home. I don't know. <laughs> That's what happened, right? You want to be that guy? <clears throat> so, sales opportunities, we have to decide whether what we have, the one thing we were successful at, was it or there's more. Are we one or are we done? Are we going to continue? Do we create opportunities? So, I have a little box over here. I call this, I carry this with me wherever I go. <laughs> You've seen me walk around the office with this. It's mostly in my pocket. Just kidding. So, whose hair is that? All right, anyway, so we're all born with something like this. And if we're not, we spend a lot of our lives building a box like this. And this box is full of opportunities. So each one of these would be an opportunity, right? Cole, an opportunity for you, sales opportunity, nice. right? Awesome, okay? Colin, wouldn't be an opportunity you've had? Great, nice answer. <laughs> <clears throat> Matt, how about you, an opportunity in your life? Uh, the increase in, in uh, responsibilities when I went okay. to the sales manager. He's gotten more responsibility since he got out of prison. That is outstanding. <laughs> okay, Rob, how about you, opportunity? To grow your career. Opportunity to grow your career, right? Nice. Okay. Scott, what opportunity have you been given in your life? Just one. So opportunity to be a father. Totally cool. And that's why it's long. It's a big responsibility. <laughs> Dr. Knapper, how about you? What opportunities have you had? Set an IT appointment. He set an IT appointment. Everybody, come on. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, Lauren, opportunity you've had? Uh, to coach soccer. To coach soccer. Where else can you be mean to kids and get away with it? Yeah, right? That's great. Outstanding. Okay. Andrew, how about you? Uh, to be an uncle. Opportunity to be an uncle. Totally cool, because you can give them back, right? Yeah. That's cool. All right, so we got one more opportunity. Michael Carter, what opportunity have you been given? <laughs> to go to San Diego? Okay, cool. There you go, okay? Lots of opportunities, and we have those in life, and sometimes we take them for granted, and we take, but we don't invest in creating additional opportunities, and so then what happens is we have an empty box, right? Now what do we do? Huh? What do you do? That'll come later. So. So we have an empty box and we've gone through all of our opportunities and when you're working in sales, sometimes we work in too tight of a circle. We're so busy, we're working with all these clients, right? And if you're out selling your good or service and then all of a sudden, wow, I closed all those deals and I don't have anybody else to talk to. So when I started in sales, my first professional sales career, my first three months were awesome. The next three months were terrible. I had no sales, my paycheck went down, I was miserable. And so my mentor said, okay, well let's take a look at who were you talking to? What were you doing in those first three months? Every day, I was prospecting with three people I hadn't met, right? They did three service calls and I also talked to three people that were current clients every day. But what happened was through all that, I had so much business coming in, I just focused on that business. Right? An emotional high, would you agree? Right? Business coming in, paychecks are good, people wanting what I have, life was good. I immediately, in that process, forgot to continue with that system of three, three, and three. Okay? And so, when all that business hit the books and I got paid for it, I hadn't been doing the three, 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 the things that worked to help build my pipeline, to build my hopper full of business, and I ceased getting paid. The circle, my net, I hadn't even been casting it. So I had to start over. I had to start over and spread that net wider. I learned a really good lesson then, right? <laughs> Don't do that, right? So sometimes in sales, I tell you that there's nothing new in sales. Absolutely nothing new in sales. There are systems that work and people that work. There's money that works. 
You know what the two sources of money are? People at work or money at work. That's all there is. Do you anybody got a tree, money tree in the backyard? <laughs> Me neither. So the ups of sales can come right away and you live it and it is awesome. The days when you got a sale is the best days ever. The days you got paid for it are even better. And the day that the sale didn't come and you got shut down, those are some of the worst days. So those are the roller coasters that we experience in sales. Do you agree with me? I mean, do you agree with me? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Hey, by the way, do you know how salespeople greet each other? Professional salespeople? Okay. Hi, Lauren, how are you? Good. I'm better than you. <laughs> That's pretty much how salespeople greet each other, right? <laughs> you can do it back to me. Hi, Lauren. I won't do that. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I used to know a guy that used to do that. So we have opportunities. We need to, through all the mental anguish, the ups and downs of sales, doesn't matter if you're in a leadership role or not, by, by succumbing to those ups and downs of sales and not being consistent in the systems, it becomes an emotional battle. And that's what we want to avoid, right? So it is an emotional career. It can bring you down to the lowest lows and it can bring you up to the highest highs. So are you in it? Are you alive? Does that excite you? That's kicking, isn't it? It's like, okay, sorry doctor, we're in surgery. Right? That's totally cool, isn't it? So you got it. Is your heart in it? Are you jacked up every day? Because if you had the opportunity to wake up this morning, guess what? You're in the movie. You're in it. Enough of that, right? Or is this you? <laughs> Sorry, he's uh, dead on the table. Let's go to lunch. Okay, is that you? Have you flatlined out because you let the mental side of sales get the best of you? Or do you realize that every once in a while you need to take advantage of that defibrillator, go back to the things that work, jumpstart the heart, little electricity, little magnetism? Doesn't matter what you do, it's all about internal motivation because if you're blessed to have somebody come along and motivate you externally, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. I know everybody in this room is in the positions that they are in because they know how to... That's not me. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know that sound was in there. Uh, everybody in this room has the ability to bring it on their own. So if you work for an employer, those of you at home sitting on your couch or at the conference room, if you have an opportunity to work for an employer that brings motivation to the workplace, that helps infuse that energy, you're one of the lucky ones. This place, this is a lucky place, okay? Like I've said before, this is the Ellis Island of sales opportunities. This is a melting pot of personalities, abilities, sales systems, sales verticals. This is a place they come together and where dreams come true, okay? And that's emotional, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna control our mind in sales, right? We want, <clears throat> somebody do me a favor, Matt, is that a, Take a look at the rubber band. Is that like a, a standard regulation rubber band? It, it was. Oh, shit, you broke it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Grant will have to edit that out of there. So I don't need the scissors because Matt broke it. Okay, somebody take a look at the paper clip. Is this like a real paper clip, Lauren? Yeah, it's legit. Oh. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So. Mind control, what are some of the things, the group, what do you do on a daily basis to help get your mind right? What do you do to control your mind? Anybody? Focus. Focus, right? You focus on the task at hand. Do you focus on the path to get there or the destination? Destination? Both. Both? Okay, so you have to know where you're going. You sit down and you plan a family vacation. I'm assuming you don't just say, hey, we're going to magically appear at Walt Disney World. Got to find a way to get there. True? Okay. So sales is, is all about that. It's all about mind control. Even on your worst day, on your worst day, you have to have your mind right. If you're interviewing for a job on your worst day, 
you have to get your mind right. Because that position means the world. The people that you're talking to on the other side of the phone, the people that are across the conference room from you, those people deserve your best. Doesn't matter if you lost your dog, Jen lost your cat, found the cat. That was your best day. The day you came here and lost the cat was not such a good day, right? But she fought through it. The cat actually was trying to motivate you. <laughs> and it called in here that day and asked how many appointments you got. And then when you had enough, then it showed up at the door. OK? All right, so we're going to practice some mind control. And I really need your help. OK, so I have the rubber band that Matt broke. Thank you. Okay. Actually, that was perfect. Um, and I have a paper clip. OK? So we're going to put the paper clip on the rubber band. Right? OK. So help me, okay? So help me, what we're going to do is we are going to move this paper clip Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway. So it went, right? Yeah. It went like an inch. That's hard. Okay, mind control. Got to get your mind right. Okay? Get your mind right because what we have to understand is by getting our mind right, the people around us, the people we talk to, helps them get their mind right. Okay? And to control the sale, control your mind, control yourself. Sales is all about control. The minute you give it up, sales going to go away. The day you stop taking charge, if you're in face-to-face -face sales and you walk into an office, into a conference room or somebody's home, you're in charge. Would you mind if we use the conference table? I'd like you to sit here. I'll sit here. You sit over there. Right? And what I'd like to do once we sit down is I'd like to share with you a little bit about myself, about my company, the reason we're together today, and what I'd like to accomplish together. Does that sound fair? And once you ask that question and get agreement, yep, that sounds fair, you never have to ask again. And we move on. So it's control in the mind, OK? So there are statues. There are statues all over the world. And the statues represent strength, stability, somebody we look up to, right? They're a statue, and they're there forever. They're majestic, and they're strong, and they're stable. But sometimes, sometimes a pigeon comes along, I think that's a seagull, and it makes the ruins of statues day. Right? So I'm thinking, he's thinking, oh, my mind's right. right. So some days you feel like the statue, I'm all that in a bag of chips, and the next day you feel like the pigeon who knows he's in charge. Right? Kind of funny, love that sound. Okay. So there are six emotions. So your sales is emotional, but buying is emotional too. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. yeah. Buying is emotional. So there are six emotions that make people buy. So the first one is greed. If I'm buying because of greed, I know that I will be rewarded. Be rewarded. Think about the things that you buy and your emotional state of mind when you're doing it. What are some things you buy out of greed? Anybody? Shoes. Shoes. <laughs> Chocolate. Chocolate. Car parts. Car parts. Crashers tickets. Crashers tickets. <laughs> right? An investment? I said that Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> the next one is fear. Gee, if I don't decide to buy this now, I'm toast. I have no choice. I have to buy. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. Good example. <laughs> what, what else? <laughs> what, what else? That kind of, everything else pales in comparison to that, doesn't it? Warranty on your kids' game systems. Life insurance. Medicine. Excuse me? Like first aid stuff. I thought you said Mary Kay stuff, Danny. 
<laughs> I'm like, Danny. <laughs> all right, so, so greed and fear, those are the first two. We've all been there. Next one is altruism, okay? That is, I'll decide now, and by doing that, I'm going to help somebody else. So recently, one of our people was in, was in here today, in here, and they were selling candy bars to help their children's charity. Good example of that. If I buy this, I can help somebody else. Pretty noble, right? Okay. Next one, people buy because of envy. So if I don't decide now, my competition will. Think about that. We work a lot in the IT arena. So if the customers don't invest in the technology now, their competition will, and they'll be ahead. Right? Competition isn't always in business. A little peer pressure, a little family pressure. Right? One person in the family buys a boat, guess what? Another one shows up the next weekend, okay? Next one is pride. I'll decide now, I'll buy it now, and I'm gonna look smart. I'll look like I have it all together. It's true. Next one, shame, if I don't decide now, I'll look stupid. I won't do the right thing that people think I should have done. No brainer. So then we go to how emotions influence what we buy. Okay. So talk to us. Talk to me about that. How do your emotions influence what you buy? If you're hungry and you're grocery shopping. Yeah, that's a killer, isn't it? So if you're hungry and you're grocery shopping, they say that's a don't do that, right? Don't do that. Always eat first. That's my motto in anything. Always eat first. <laughs> yogurt place and get the $10 bowl. There you go. Go to the yogurt place and get the $10 bowl. How big is that? Bowls as big. I'd like the bowl as big as your head. Stay offline when you're emotional. Yeah, stay offline when you're emotional because you do emotional shopping. They say one of the biggest pluses that people have is looking at Facebook and seeing how everyone is doing, the friends and the contacts around them, but it also is one of the absolute worst things you could do because all that envy, all that, gee, I wish I was them, they took a vacation to the Bahamas, I didn't, I can't afford it. So it's opposite ends of the spectrum and with Facebook and social media, they say there's nothing in between. It can either positively impact you or negatively impact you. Okay. So we wanna talk about those things. If you take a look at this, and I know the print is small, so these are buying stages. We go from awareness, I have interest in the product, I'm evaluating it, I'll purchase it, and then I have loyalty, brand loyalty, product service loyalty. So if we go through the emotions, when you become aware of something, like let's say that the new Corvette Stingrays came out and Eric sees one on the street and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm just so consumed with it, okay? He is aware, he's extremely emotional, emotions are at their highest, his logic is at the lowest. He doesn't realize it's going to cost him $1,600 a month. He doesn't care. It's emotional. He's all in it. So content involved in the decision-making process, he's really not looking at the content. You agree? It's just emotional. As he goes to, now I'm interested. My emotions are still high, but they're decreasing because now it's becoming a situation where I'm going to start educating myself. <clears throat> so now he's starting to look for reasons to justify his interest. Not so emotional at this point. Now he's evaluating. This plays a backup role to the logic. So logic starts taking over and now it becomes high. You see what happened? Emotion, when we become aware, is real high. But as soon as we start evaluating emotion, we start taking that out of the mix. And now we start thinking about what depth of information is available? How credible or incredible do I, incredible? That's kind of, I, I need some solid reasons to buy to justify my purchase. <clears throat> Think about the things that you buy on a daily basis and how that works and it's all automatic. Go through the grocery store, we talked about shopping for groceries, you go through the grocery store, there's impulse items there. So that's up here, awareness, hi, I'll get it. It's all emotional. 
So now Eric is looking at the Corvette Stingray. Now he's in depth, he's evaluating it. Now he's going to the purchase because he's done all of his research. He knows it's the right thing for him. Now his emotions go back up again. Not only was I emotional before, not only did I want it, but now I've proved to myself that I'm going to get it. It's the right product for me, it's the right service for me, and I'm going forward. So logic can vary in that, but people's fears about making a wrong decision often appear at the point of taking action and handing over money. Okay? Right here is where people who are selling goods or services have to reinforce the emotions that were way back at the beginning. All this stuff happens in a 15 or a 30 second commercial on TV. All that stuff happens when you walk into Best Buy. It's merchandising, it's marketing, there's so much subliminal, there's so much study of the human mind and the human heart, how we're wired, that goes on in just a few seconds. Then, Eric bought that car. So now, he's loyal. That supports his decision that he made the right decision. His emotions are high, he's all in, goes and talks to all his friends, hey, I'll meet you at the bar. Oh, by the way, I bought a Stingray, just if you're curious. Okay? So, logic used to be low, but now it's on the increase because now he's going to tell everybody, this is why it was a good decision for me. I thought this out. I had that salesperson over the barrel. I got such a good deal, I'm sure you wouldn't be able to get that. Right? Here's what my payment is. Here's the warranty I got. Think about it. It's what we do. Then, in order to keep his loyalty that way, what does the car dealer do? How do they keep him engaged? Free oil changes. Free oil changes. Send you letters. Thanks for your purchase. So, by the way, we have a referral program. Oh, by the way, we're going to have an open house. By the way, here's a new model of the Stingray. The next model year is coming out. Wouldn't you like to come and take a look at that? Because the other one is a year old. Okay. All this stuff happens anytime we're buying. Okay. And the longer people spend time in that decision-making process, they build more emotion and they work through this process from awareness all the way to brand loyalty, product loyalty. So then we talk, couple that with the emotions that are involved. So this is a, a wheel of the most influential emotions that we have. So if we take the wheel around, we have awe, passion, joy, anticipation, admiration, interest, trust, content, acceptance, serenity, submission, boredom, yawn, sadness, pre pre apprehension, loathing, contempt, fear, anger, grief, and shock. These two areas are the ones, the emotions that connect to buying more than any other emotions. And they are anger. People are more likely to buy when they're angry. Or they're more likely to buy when they're feeling that joy. And they're definitely not going to buy when they are feeling serenity or submission because they're not in charge, they're not in control. Think about the things you buy from groceries to cars. Is anybody going to buy when you're feeling submissive? Serene? But if I'm mad or I'm ecstatic and joyful, I'm going to buy then. So when you walk into a store, the music, the merchandising, the signage, even the font, the font size, the colors, everything, those are designed to help create the emotional, or the emotions that help us buy. And they know it. Now you know it. Okay. So there are, bless you, there are keys, that was not a sound in the PowerPoint. The keys to being a successful salesperson, those are to take the mo emotion out of your sales career. Unless you want some cheese with your wine, stop whining. Build in some systems, do what you know works, 
listen to other people, watch what successful people do, and simply use what they have. No reason to reinvent the wheel. And that's another thing we do here, right? Most organizations train on here's the right way to sell, here's the right way to communicate, here's the right way to move people through that sales cycle and that sales process, and here's the right, pe right way to close. It's all about process, proven processes, okay? We are fortunate at this company and many others that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. That doesn't mean that we don't continue to evolve and make those systems better. But as long as we focus on those, emotion, uh, on those systems, we can take the emotion out of it and it just becomes easier. It just becomes more mechanical, right? and controlling people, helping to control their emotions and our emotions, both selling and buying. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some things that help you get your mind right. Okay. Make a sale, you'll make a living. Sell a relationship, you'll make a fortune. So a commercial on the radio about it from a car dealer, they say the first car we sell someone is all about price, the second car we sell is all about service. It's all about the relationship. Right. The next one, people buy when they're ready, not when you need to sell. And can you tell me that people don't know when you're pressing and when you need a sale? They do? You do? Pressing, quotas, gee, I really need the sale. I've even seen people say, listen, I'm going to have a trip to Hawaii if I have one more sell. sale. Could you buy that? Could you help me out? People know when you need a sale. Sometimes it's even worth walking away to secure the sale. So when you sell price, you rent the business. When you sell value, you own it. Pricing, discounting, work for free, those are not ways to build brand loyalty. Those are not ways to build client relationships long term. So your prospect will tell you what you need to tell them to sell them. And how do we, how do we get them to do that? You've got to ask questions. Actively engage, really passionate and care about the answers. And not just get an answer, but dig deeper. What does that mean? Totally get it. What does that mean to you? How could I help you? If I was in a position to help you, how could I help you? Most powerful words in the English language are, I need your help. And I don't know too many people that would ever turn you down if you asked them that. You just said something. I didn't hear what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I think Andrew wants you to repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> That was hilarious. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if two, two <laughs> that's funny. If two people want to do business together, they won't let the details get in the way. But if two people don't want to do business together, they will. So when you have an upset client in any industry with any product and they're really, really looking for an out, they'll always focus on the details, what you didn't do. But if you're on the same page always, it'll never come to that. And that is active listening. That's asking good questions. That's repeating back to them. That's living it, breathing it in their shoes. Right? Totally engaging the client. So the close begins when the prospect agrees to meet. You all agree with that, don't you? See, I actually think it begins before that. In our business, we're all about setting appointments for our clients. So it begins then. The close begins then. The close begins when the KDM picks up the phone and utters one word, right? Hello? That's when it begins. So we go back to getting our mind right. The roller coaster of sales, the emotional roller coaster. Guess what? Every ride begins with every call. I'm going up. Is this going to be a great ride or a bad one? Am I excited and then motivated or am I scared to death about getting to the top and seeing the big drop I have? Okay. 
So great salespeople never give up control of the process. We talked about that a little earlier, right? Control. So there are ways to do that so that people are still engaged and they feel like they are in control. Well, I'd like to, you to sit here. How's that sound to you? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. Would you like to pay for this with your credit card or an ACH? No, I think credit card would be best. Counselor selling techniques. So, great salespeople. They never lose their passion. And is that you? I mean, is that you? Well, let me hear it. Is that you? Yes. Okay, are you passionate about what you do? Yes. Do your clients know that? Do the people that you talk to 135 to 270 times a day know that you're passionate about it? You're asking a survey question? You're making a dial? Is it just numbers? Do they really matter? What if you knew on the other end of the phone somebody's waiting there with a checkbook saying, man, I really wish that somebody with an IT company had called. What if they were all like that? How, how, how would that get your mind right? Yeah. So the best thing that you can do is you can keep going, okay? So there's just a one-liner thing. Do you know how you can tell if a salesperson is lying? Lips are, lips are moving. Yeah. yeah. We'll figure. <laughs> Not here. Tell the truth. You never have to remember what you said. Pretty easy to follow. Okay. You can control the conversation, but you should always do it with integrity and honesty. Make a lot of dials in a day. You talk to a lot of people. We have a lot of clients. Okay. We should never have to remember what we said because we always know that we said the right thing. Okay. So how can you keep moving forward? Okay. So here's some rules for every day that I want you to think about. First thing is, again, get your mind right. Think positively. Okay. <coughs> Eat healthy. I just had my first full can of Red Bull. Uh, <laughs> and it's not kicked in yet, so I'm kind of wondering what happened. It's defective. So exercise today. If you're like me, I used to exercise all the time. You get busy, things happen, kids grow up, busy at work, other things going on and you stop working out, you stop exercising. It's the best way to get your mind right. Okay. Exercise today. If you're thinking, I'm going to start exercising tomorrow, it's not going to happen. So start today. Don't care how tired you are. Worry less. Anybody know for a fact that worry accomplished anything? Doesn't accomplish anything. Why worry? Why worry? So let's not. So the next thing we want to do is work hard. That also means work and smart. Work hard. Know when you worked hard. Give yourself a break and say, I left it all in the field of battle, like Vince Lombardi said, right? At, when the clock ticks to zero. You should be lying breathless on the field of battle, knowing that there's not anything else that I can do. And if you walk out the door at 5, 5.15, 5.30, and you can feel like that, then you did your best. If you're driving home and you get into the garage or the driveway and you're like, man, I, I just don't feel like I really brought it. And that's an opportunity to recalibrate, get your mind right, hit the day tomorrow, and make sure that doesn't happen again. Okay, so those are seven active, we talk about active listening. I call these my active living, active living skills. These are the things that you have to do, okay? So now we have laugh often. If you know me, you spend time with me, I like to laugh. I like to have a good time. Anybody in here not been in a stressful situation in your life where you absolutely didn't think things were ever gonna get better? Raise your hand. Anybody had a bad day? An awful day. Where you just know, maybe it's money, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's something else. This is my worst day. Okay. Hopefully those don't happen too often, right? So when they're not happening, let's laugh. Let's laugh. That's, that's like a vitamin supplement that you can't buy anywhere else. 
when you're laughing, when you're smiling, the endorphins and everything else it releases in your system, it just breeds more. So laugh. The last one is, let's get some sleep. Let's sleep well. And if you're not, get that checked out. Find out what's keeping you from doing that. Uh, get some sleep. Do those seven things. Focus on those every day. Might make a difference. So we got to get your mind right, and we have to create our own opportunities. So, so what do you say we create some opportunities? I mean, really, what do you say we create some opportunities? Now, I want you to get jacked up. Dorothy says, I want you to create some opportunities. I want to hear some yelling. Yeah. All right, all right. So let's, let's like stand up, okay? Put this stuff out of your hands, put it down, create some opportunities. So we go back to our crystal box of opportunities and it was full when we started and now it's empty. That sucks. So, let's say we create some opportunities together, right? So I want to go through a couple things with you. Would you please, on the count of three, I want you to say opportunities loud, okay? One, two, three. Opportunities. It's not loud enough. Dorothy wouldn't like it. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Opportunities. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some opportunities and we're going to fill up that box. Okay? What do you say? What do you say? Yes, All right, let's do it. So I'm excited about this. I hope it works. So on the count of three, it's got to be loud or it won't work. Okay? It's got to be loud or it won't work. Are you with me? Yeah. With me? Yeah. Opportunities? One, two, three. Opportunities. All right. Okay. All right. Give yourselves a hand. Have a great day.